Today, I'm gonna to break down exactly how to use protein to maximize fat loss while maintaining or even growing muscle mass. And I've gotta tell you, this is not just theory, this is backed by research from places like the International Journal of Sport, Nutrition, and Exercise Metabolism, and my own experience getting down to 10% body fat while maintaining my strength. Stick around to the end because the last tip about protein timing is actually counter to what most people think, but it will make your life much, much easier if you often fail to get your post-workout protein in. Whether you're trying to shed that last 15 to 20 pounds like I did recently, or you're just starting your fitness journey, this is highly applicable to you because who doesn't want to lose fat while maintaining their hard-earned gains? That's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do today with the precise protein strategy I use and the science behind why it works. So let's get into it. Back when I was at 196 pounds and needed to drop down to 181 pounds, one of the absolute key factors was getting my protein intake dialed in perfectly. And I mean perfectly, because when you're in a caloric deficit like I was at around 1800 calories, you really can't afford to mess this up. First up, let's talk about exactly how much protein you need. And this is where most people get it wrong. They either massively under eat protein thinking that a chicken breast a day is enough, or they go completely overboard thinking they need like 300 grams of protein when they weigh 180 pounds. Well, here's the science behind it. Research shows that when you're in a caloric deficit trying to lose fat, you actually need more protein than when you're just bulking. We're talking about one to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight minimum for guys in their 30s and 40s like me, who are trying to preserve muscle while cutting. And one quick but crucial note here, I actually only have one kidney, so I have to be even more careful about staying on top of my hydration when consuming this much protein. Your body needs adequate water to process all this protein efficiently, and trust me, you don't wanna mess around with this. You need to be drinking at least three liters of water a day. That's the absolute minimum when you're hitting these kinds of protein numbers. I actually aim for like four liters because of my situation, but even with two kidneys, you need to stay on top of your fluid intake. This isn't just about protein processing. Being hydrated also helps with, you know, reducing hunger signals. Sometimes, you know, thirst masks itself as hunger or supporting muscle recovery or keeping your energy levels up during workouts. Hydration helps all of that. So for me at 196 pounds back in June or so, well, that meant I needed to get about 180 to 200 grams of protein daily, which on its own is 800 calories. And let me tell you, getting that much protein while staying under 1800 calories overall is like trying to solve a puzzle. But I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it and you can do it too. Now, before I break down my exact strategy, let's talk about why protein is so crucial when you're cutting. Protein has the highest thermic effect of all macronutrients. Your body actually burns about 20 to 30% of protein calories just by processing them. That's compared to like five to 10% for carbs and fats. So this means if you eat 100 calories of protein, your body uses up to 30 of those calories just digesting it. That's basically free fat loss right there. Secondly, and this is huge, protein is the most satiating macronutrient. Now this means it keeps you feeling full longer than anything else. This is absolutely crucial when you're in a caloric deficit because let's face it, being hungry sucks and it usually is what makes people fall off their diet. Now here's something absolutely critical that most people get completely wrong. They start their day with carbs, usually something like oatmeal or worse, a bagel, thinking it'll give them quick energy for the day. But let me tell you why that's a massive mistake. When you start your day with carbs, you're basically setting yourself up for a losing game of catch up all day long. Here's why. Your body burns those carbs ridiculously quickly, your insulin spikes and then crashes and suddenly you're hungry again in like an hour. Now you're fighting hunger all day, probably overeating and trying desperately to catch up on your protein requirements while already being over your calories. I see this mistake all the time, I've made it before myself and it absolutely kills people's fat loss goals. Instead, here's what actually works. Front load your protein first thing in the morning. I'm talking about getting like 40 to 50 grams of protein as your first meal before you even think about carbs. For me, this looks like a protein shake with zero fat uh, Greek yogurt or um, lean ground turkey with egg whites in an omelet. This strategy is absolutely game changing for three reasons. First up, you're immediately knocking out 25% of your daily protein requirements right there at breakfast. That's it, you don't even have to think about it. You're a quarter of the way through your pro daily protein requirements. Two, you're setting up a strong satiety base that'll last for hours. Satiety meaning how full you feel, how satisfied you feel. 
And three, you're not fighting those insulin spikes and crashes that make you hungry all day long. And this leads perfectly into how I structure the rest of my protein intake while maintaining muscle. Here's where I see people absolutely driving themselves crazy, and I've done it myself before, trying to make every single meal perfect. You don't need to make every meal some perfect combination of protein, fats, and carbs. That's just a recipe for driving yourself insane and probably failing your diet. Trust me, I've done it before. I've been measuring out exactly 30 grams of protein and trying to hit that perfect ratio of carbs and fat and just for every single meal. And it just doesn't make any sense. You don't get any extra points for nailing every single meal perfectly. Instead, here's what actually works. Let yourself have normal meals sometimes, sometimes a bit higher in carbs or fats than you would otherwise. And then use those protein efficient foods that I'll outline in a little bit to catch up on your protein requirements. These are foods that give you the most protein bang for your buck. Let me break down what I mean by protein efficient foods. This is stuff like extra lean ground turkey, that's 22 grams of protein for just 120 calories, or 0% fat Greek yogurt, that's 17 grams of protein for 90 calories, or chicken breast without the skin, that's 26 grams of protein for 130 calories, or tuna in water, that's 20 grams of protein for just 90 calories, or egg whites, 26 grams of protein for just 120 calories. These are your protein ketchup foods. If you had a burger for lunch that was higher in fat but lower in protein, well, no problem. Have a protein efficient dinner with say like extra lean ground turkey and Greek yogurt. I put like uh, taco seasoning on my extra lean ground turkey and it just tastes amazing. I throw some Greek yogurt in there. It's just, it's so good. And anyways, this approach is just so much more sustainable than trying to make every single meal perfect. Now. Finally, here's that counterintuitive tip I promised about protein timing. Most people think you need to slam protein like an hour after your workout or you miss your protein window or whatever. But research actually shows that total daily protein intake is actually far more important than the timing, except for maybe one crucial window, and this is different than the post-gym window, but this window is right before bed. So studies from the Journal of Nutrition show that having about 30 to 40 grams of protein right before bed, particularly from a slow digesting source like casein, uh, it can boost your muscle protein synthesis while you sleep by up to 22%. This is absolutely huge when you're trying to preserve muscle in a deficit. So what does all this look like in practice? Here's my typical protein schedule. I'm gonna show you what I logged back in August in the middle of my cut uh, for a single day. Let's get into this. Here's what I ate in a day on August 12th. This was in the middle of a cut where I was going from 196 pounds down to about 180, well, um, ultimately about 176. Uh, but I wanted to show you how I use protein in a day like this. This particular day, as you can see in the morning, I actually missed getting my protein in in the morning, but I did hit my protein macros for the day at around 180 grams of protein. Uh, and this is on a day when I'm looking at 1800 total calories for the day. Uh, I would have lifted on a day like this, like this particular day, a Monday for sure. It's chest day, you wouldn't miss that. Um, so I would have done about an hour 15 of lifting, about 30 minutes of cardio after lifting, and probably walked six to 12,000 steps that day. But from a protein perspective, that's what's really important here. Uh, obviously, as I said, I missed that breakfast protein. I'll usually try to hit that. My lunch was my meal delivery service. I get about six of these meals every week and uh, this one was prawns and um, steak, I believe, with a bit of mashed potato, and these uh, numbers come straight off uh, the labels they put on those packages, so I trust that they are correct. And so I'm getting my protein well within, uh, really that sort of quote-unquote anabolic window is really practically the entire day. I mean, you probably have at least six hours on either side of your workout to get that protein, so don't stress about it too much, but I'm Certainly, you know, I work out in the morning, so this is well within that window, if you will. Um, but really all that matters, as I mentioned, is daily protein intake for the most part. Uh, I had a little bit of a snack, uh, Americano Misto in the afternoon. My dinner is gonna be uh, extra lean ground turkey with taco seasoning, put into a couple of these tortillas. These uh, tortillas are lower carb than regular tortillas. Uh, so there you go, a couple of them are 180 cows, still surprisingly a lot for a tortilla. And then, you know, I put the Greek yogurt on it as this, you know, basically a replacement for sour cream. And uh, and then just before bed, I'm having that um, skinless chicken breast, just a quick snack for that sort of overnight protein synthesis. So this all came out very neatly to around 1800 calories. And, uh, and that's what I did as I, I'll put that link up there to that, um, how I lost 15 pounds in 30 days video, but 
this was basically what got me there, this type of meal plan and these type of meals. So that got me to 100 grams of protein, actually about 179 grams, uh, while keeping all my calories in check and dropping about 15 pounds of pure fat, maintaining my strength all in about 30 days. I'll put a link to that video where I go over exactly what I did over that 30 day period up here or here somewhere for you. Now I know someone's gonna ask in the comments about plant-based protein and yes, you can absolutely get all your protein from plants, but you're gonna need to be even more strategic about it because plant proteins typically come with more calories per gram of protein. They usually have carbs and fats as sort of fillers in them. I had a recent conversation with a friend of mine. I'll put a redacted uh, screen grab of it up here, but he got off vegetarianism and switched to animal-based protein and found it far easier to get his protein in. And I just found that humorous and well-timed uh, for this discussion. But in the interest of fairness, I'll put a table up here and you can hit pause on it to see some of the top protein sources for both um, animal-based protein and plant-based protein. Remember, this isn't just about losing weight. It's about losing fat while retaining your lean mass, your muscles. Nobody wants to lose that while they're cutting. And protein is absolutely crucial for both of those things. So if you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you know, let me know in the comments if there are other topics you'd like me to break down. I wanna thank everyone for their support so far. It's been really heartening to see just this channel that we started like a couple months ago. Uh, our last video got 8,000 views. I think we're up over 400 subscribers right now. Um, so thanks again for all your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll talk to you in the comments. Thanks so much.